guys, it's Michelle, former client advisor for Louis Vuitton. Thank you so much for joining. If you are new to me, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for all the juicy details of Louis Vuitton and what it's like to work there. No, if you are so keen to point out, this girl must be bitter. This job is not a walk in the park nor is it the perfect company because you guys must think this is the perfect product. Luxury, luxury, it's retail and it is a hard job, but I am here to give you informative information about the bags, about the job from both sides. So here we go. This video is about the five things you wanna do with your Louis Vuitton or any luxury handbags, by the way. You might wanna to run to your closet and do these things right now. So I'm going to share you some tips that we were trained on as a client advisor on how to store your bag. So when you come into the store and buy your bag, there's usually a few things that we tell you and you can find these informations on the website as well as such as how to clean your bag, wipe it with a damp cloth, um, such as a microfiber towel here. They're very handy. And I have my vintage bag here. Now, after wearing your handbag, there might be like hand oils and things. So you just want to wipe it down at the end of the day. We say treat your handbags like your face. It's exposed to the elements. People might be touching them. Your kids might be touching them. You touch the doorknob and then now that's touching the bag. So, you know, your bag's picking up some dirt and stuff, which is really important to wipe down the bag, especially if you're going to put it away for storage. So let's talk about how you're going to store your bag. Now this is debatable. The orange box that you get with your bag, client advisors are advised to do not store the bag in the box. The reason for that is do not store your handbags in an airtight box, period. I learned the hard way my mother's handbags were stored this one and the speedy were stored in an airtight plastic bin like a giant tupperware that resulted in the bag smelling a little bit like mildew it was not allowed to breathe now it smells fine because i aired it out but that's one of the no-nos furthermore on that i have seen those hanging bag holders that you put in your closet like that you might get from the container store or target and there are these big plastic pouches that you slip the handbags in. Well, those plastic pieces will stick to your handbag, whether it's canvas or leather. So I highly advise against it, just in case there's color transfer or your bag might actually melt. But then again, also with the plastic, you risk creating mildew and we just want to avoid anything like that. That is the reason from Louis Vuitton. Yes, this is debatable on the interwebs because everyone likes to store their bag in the orange box. It's the perfect way to not keep, get it crushed. But the reason we advise to not do that is so that there is air circulating around the bag. With that said, the best thing to do is to put your bag in a dust bag. Of course, like you said, wipe it down first, put it in the dust bag, clean out the insides, make sure there is no leaky pens or gum in there that's going to melt. And put it in a dust bag and simply just put it on your shelf in the closet, somewhere that's not too stuffed and has good air circulation, not too hot and not too humid. Does that seem like a lot of rules? It kind of is, but trust me, I have seen people store their bags in all kinds of crazy ways, like shoving them in a drawer and pushing them down with no dust bag. Now, some of the Vuitton bags are meant to store flat, like the Speedy and the Neverfull. I still like to put newspaper in my Speedy so that it stands up and it doesn't crease. And then I put her in the dust bag and put her on the shelf. Now I stuff mine with newspaper because it will help to absorb the moisture and any type of mildew smell that your bag might accumulate. Some people don't like this because the carbon from the paper might rub onto your bag. Both of my vintage Vuittons have a dark lining so it doesn't bother me. You can use tissue paper or you can use one of those um, bag pillows that you can get on Amazon. And I do recommend something absorbent like those little gel packs that you find in your shoes sometimes. That just helps to absorb moisture if you happen to live in some place that is more humid. Okay, now especially, especially important for patent leather bags. Any brand of patent leather bags, patent leather is very difficult to take care of 
because it can start to get sticky. Okay, so patent leather, it actually has layers of varnish to give it that glass finish. So in the Vuitton collection, it's called Verni, and I have owned other patent bags. Well, be very careful with your patent leather. Now, one thing that you cannot avoid with either patent leather or regular leather, but you can really see this on patent because it has several layers of the varnish. If it scratches, it scratches and you're SOL. If you get a stain on it, it's in the varnish, you're SOL. If it color transfers, I've seen these on the Verni Alma. It's very sad. If you leave it in excessive sunlight, it will stain, it will lose color, it will discolor. And also with the Almas, if you let the handles fall onto the bag and store it, the stain from the handle will be on the body of the bag. For this, I recommend wrap the handles in either a silk scarf or even some tissue paper so that when you're storing it, it's not touching the bag directly. Be sure to check on your patent bags every three months. For that matter, check on all of your bags every three months and make sure they're not having a sticky together party. So especially with your patent bags, make sure they're in the dust bag and not touching anything else because this could create transfer, but also when your patent bags are just sitting there stiff, they could crease and that causes the patent varnish to crack as well and it is not fixable. So do I recommend buying patent leather bags um, for the thousands of dollars price tag? No if it's more of a trendy item. And there are tr plenty of trendy brands that have patent bags. I would definitely go for the cheaper option, unless you know that it's going to go into heavy rotation. So that brings me to another point. Make sure you rotate your bags. So this is something we also heavily push to the consumer, rotate your bags. Just like you change your shoes every day, you don't wear the same pair of high heels five days straight, first of all, hurt your feet but you're ruining your shoes, you're not letting the leather kind of breathe and settle back to its natural shape. So we really encourage rotating handbags. I encourage this because there is not one bag that matches every outfit. A lot of customers request that. Let me get the bag that matches everything. There really doesn't exist. And personally, I think with everyone's individual style, you can have so much fun with different outfits and different bags. Now, rotating your bags. It gives your chance, your handbag a chance to breathe. You should clean it out in between uses. And it will actually just last longer if you don't use it every single day. You know, we ladies, we tend to put everything in the bag and not even think about it. So we have this bottomless pit and a handbag that's heavier than a brick. It's not good for your shoulders either, but rotating them also keeps them moving on the shelf so you never have a bag sitting there. I have made the mistake of having bags sitting there, so things that happen, mildew, um, a cloudy, sticky, patent bag, bags get crushed, or you just forget about them. So plenty of fun reasons to rotate your bag collection. Okay, so here's an extra tip for you guys too. Now it will tell you on the website to clean your bag with a damp microfiber cloth, something else that you want to consider. So this is a vintage bag and she was sitting in her little Tupperware untouched. So you can see on this side, the leather is pristine, but I'm gonna show you on this side, the leather has many cracks forming. So you want to avoid that. Use a leather conditioner. This particular one is Cadillac. There's also the brand called Apple Guard. It's a leather conditioner. What I do is I squirt a bit onto the, my microfiber cloth and just a little bit. You don't want to make it too wet because if your leather is wet, that will actually, can actually cause cracks instead of conditioning it. So I see that this bag needs to be conditioned and I wish I caught it before it actually started to crack. So that's another reason to check on your bags every three months and rotate them, condition them, and conditioning them is like putting lotion on your skin. Another tip, you can use that leather conditioner on the canvas. The canvas of your Louis Vuitton bag is made to behave like leather, so it is okay. I actually recommend conditioning them. This is an older bag and the canvas of this is impeccable. Okay, some of the newer bags, I know the canvas cracks and the canvas does not feel like this. 
I did mention in a previous video, there are different canvases based how structured the bag should be. So obviously this bag should be very structured. It's a very stiff canvas and she's not used that much, but probably if I open and close this enough, the leather might start to wear right here in the wear area. So this is where I'm going to be conscious about lotioning it. And this one too has a leather interior, so I can condition inside it as well. Oh, something else about the vintage bags, FYI. The inside lining, there's a pocket in the inside and that pocket is sticky. So I have noticed and I have heard from my audience too about the stickiness inside vintage bags and there's nothing you can do about it. this type of stickiness that's uh, due to sitting in storage and absorbing some humidity. So those are just some things to be aware of. Um, the lining of this particular bag is not replaceable, but it's something I can live with. I've just decided it's okay. I just won't use the pocket. Anyhow, back to conditioning the leather strap. So you can see, so this bag is from like 1986 or no, I'm sorry, I think 1994, something like that. It is already patina. It's got that nice golden patina. So me putting leather conditioner on this and put a very spare amount, just make it damp and um, wipe onto the leather. Please listen to me here. If you have a brand new bag with white vachetta that has not yet patina, do not use leather conditioner or apple guard. Repeat, this is not encouraged from Louis Vuitton corporate. We do not tell people use apple guard or anything like that because on your white bachetta, the second you touch it with something damp, whether it's water, your hand, oils from your hand is going to get on that white bachetta. And especially if you use conditioner, it will instantly turn the color of the leather from white to something else, to whatever it is, I can't say what. So you are not going to condition your leather straps until the bag is fully patina. How do you know it's fully patina? It will be a honey color. And usually the patina has like somewhat of a sheen to it. You can't really see on this strap, but you, can, you might be able to see right here. See how it has a bit of a sheen to it. It's a honey color. So this one has changed color. Let me repeat again. If you just got a bag from Vuitton and it's white vachetta has not patina, just don't touch it. Now, if you want it to patina quicker, you want to give it a little suntan, put it in the sun, but not too long, like just like your skin, not too long. It's, um, I can't believe that people would actually say, I put my wallet on the dashboard of the car and it melted to the dashboard. Well, I mean, Sometimes it's hot enough here to bake cookies on your dashboard. So, you know, there's some common sense involved too. Um, most of the canvas bags have glazing, the wallets have glazing. It's gonna melt if you put it in the hot sun. So like I said, treat this like it's your face. Put lotion, don't keep, don't keep it exposed to the elements. And you probably don't wanna put your face in an airtight box either where it can't breathe. <laughs> I hope those were some helpful tips. Again, most importantly, do not store it anywhere where it's airtight or doesn't have some type of airflow. You want to use the dust bag and I do stuff it inside so that it keeps its structure and don't keep it too squished next to its neighbors because you don't want to flatten your bags. It could create creases and stuff that, you know, you won't like later. And these things are expensive, so treat them well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're to this point, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. I'll see you soon. Bye.